What's up guys? Welcome to another drift cart video. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how I put a Willwood handbrake on my drift go-kart. So as you can tell, I've had this Willwood master cylinder mounted to my drift go-kart for a while now. And this thing honestly has taken a beating and it's never given up. So I'm uh, super pumped on that. If this is any sort of review, uh, 10 out of 10, Willwood. This whole time I've had to run this copper pipe. Well, not had to. I've chosen to run this copper pipe on the Willwood instead of like a nice handle, but I ordered something from eBay today and it's gonna make it 10 times more spicy. So this right here is just your average universal eBay handbrake that anybody just getting into drifting would probably consider putting in their car. When I have a car build, I personally don't plan on using eBay as my part source, but for my go-kart, the aftermarket selection is amazing. I love that all these cheap CNC like Chinese parts just get sent to the US and usually break on cars, but for go-karts, they last. This handle is going to work perfect for the Willwood. Plus, it sort of looks like just a boxier version of the handle that they put on their real master cylinders. So I'm super pumped on that. Um, I'm glad I finally just, you know, bit the bullet and spent $40 on a stupid handle. Um, but that's pretty much today's install. And while I'm doing that, I'll just explain how I mounted it on backwards. Anybody familiar with these master cylinders know instantly that this thing is mounted backwards. But for those of you that don't know, maybe just getting into this, here's what I did. Willwood again takes it home with this gravity fed fluid reservoir that is so important when bleeding go-kart brakes because they're just the most tedious systems ever. However, when you do flip it around to get the actual e-brake you know, where you're pulling it back instead of pushing it forward like a regular go-kart master cylinder, it gets in the way. That is where these spacers come in. So this is pretty much the only constraint to the whole process is getting, I use 5 16 bolts and nuts and these spacers in order to space it out to where, you know, the reservoir can run fine. We use the same design on my buddy's cart over here. His are actually a little bit cleaner with the black spacers. Um, and his reservoir, I mean his master cylinder, looks a lot newer than mine. So, this video is not a tutorial at all, but I'm pretty sure if you're just the average hobbyist, you can figure out how we did that. Not only is this a, you know, novelty style mod that really makes the drifting experience better, it also doubles as an actual mod. So if we can envision a stock or original style brake system on this cart, it would leave us with a pedal right here, a rod that goes from that pedal to a flipped around master cylinder, you know, that runs the whole brake system. This becomes an issue when we add this angle mod. Um, I will explain why and how in a different video if you're curious, but that's for another video. Um, just know that because of these angle mods, it does create some irritation in the brake system. And on this tie rod right here, you can see before I learned about the wheel wood and backwards mounting, I struggled with it for a while. So we'll start out by removing the original handle. Um, I just used one bolt for this, so super easy. And then we're gonna take a look at the damage of the super duper loose handle. Jeez, there it is. So unfortunately that handle wrecked on the paint, <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna do my best to hide it with the other one. Same thing for this one. We'll just dismantle it, and I'm gonna see oops, what I can do with it. It's looking like a six mil and a 12, 13, 13. Let's go. I'm excited to actually see this thing taken apart because I've just had to imagine it for like the last four months. Oh, it's still threaded. So I just realized that last clip was not in focus, but you guys get the picture. Super stoked in this. Now let's figure out how we're gonna fit it on that thing. So my first mounting idea is to use the Dremel to hollow out the bottom of the handle 
until where this tie rod end goes on. And I'm hoping I'll just be able to slide it over and either use this hole or this hole as a way to mount it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and send it. I mean, there's not much planning I can really do. I have to cut it either way. Maybe we could do it on the outside. I just think going over would just be the cleanest look to me. Ooh. Did I just find another way? See, this is why I can't do an install, guys. See how that works? I was just going to do it one way and then instantly found a possible other way to do it. Let's take it apart real quick and see what I can do. What if it went like that? You know what I mean? It'll give you that same function without all the Dremel cutting and possibly scratching. Okay. All right, I'm gonna try this out and we'll see what happens. Guys, let's just say I'm pretty stoked I didn't just take a Dremel to my brand new handle. Can we just get a moment of appreciation for how freaking perfect this handle fits on this master cylinder. Like, how is this not made for it? Like, let's look at the details. So all I did was flip the handle around <laughs> along with the master cylinder and utilized, I believe what was originally this guy right here, which is originally the parking brake or a way to hold the handle back if the car is parked. So I simply just mounted that up and it made it flush with this plate down here and then I just threw a zip tie on it for now just to test it out but oh my gosh it is so much better like if you can tell the only wiggle is the handle itself now like it goes forward and backwards by design but that's amazing like I'm honestly kind of mad I waited this long to order this because this would have solved like multiple issues and arguably made it to where the powder coat on my master cylinder didn't just crust away, but pumped. I'm still in shock of how easy that was. Uh, the last step to this process is just gonna be removing this for cleanliness, so I'll take that off real quick. Alrighty, so just gonna tighten this thing up and this install is complete. Alrighty, just to get a little bit of movement in the video, I'm gonna be showing you guys my handbrake just by me spinning the wheels with my hands. So as you can tell, super responsive. Um, overall, one of my favorite mods I've done so far on the car. All right guys, that's gonna finish it up for today's drift cart video. If you enjoyed what you saw, please make sure you subscribe. I also have an Instagram dedicated just to this cart. That's at drift go kart. And I also produce all the music that plays in the background of these videos. So if you enjoy that, I have a personal Instagram at jacob.sherwood. So thanks again for watching, peace.